Hey y'all, Anya here. First things first, new place, who this? Your girl has moved into a whole new place and I'm so excited to share it with you guys, but not in this video, another video. This video right here is about showing you how to create a blurred background using the kit lens. That's right, this little bad boy that comes standard with any camera purchase can create <coughs> I feel like I'm always coughing up a lung whenever I hit record on these things. Anyway, this kit lens can help you create a blurred background. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video here. So let's get to it. Okay, Onye, what the heck is a kit lens? Fair question. So this is a kit lens and it is essentially your standard basic Betty lens, all right? It doesn't have the bells and whistles. It is as basic as it can get. So that's what we're gonna call this lens throughout this video, your basic Betty lens, all right? AKA the kit lens. This particular kit lens that I'll be working with today is from Canon. This is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens with a 3.5 to 5.6 f-stop. I remembered all of that by some miracle. But yeah, those are the specifications about this. The beauty of a kit lens is that, like I said, it's all purpose. So it can work as a wide angle lens. It could somewhat work <laughs> for close up shots. And believe it or not, it can help you achieve that blurred background. But it does require a little bit of work. If you've been trying to achieve a blurred background with this basic Betty and have been struggling, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you how you can do it even with a basic Betty. So let's hop into it. So I am now um, by my coffee table getting ready to take a picture of this beautiful little snake plant right here. Yes, it's fake because I cannot keep a plant alive to save my life. That's neither here nor there. Um, I have placed the basic Betty kit lens on my Canon 70D. And I'm just gonna talk you guys through um, what I'm changing, the settings I'm using to create that blurred background. So the first thing we talked about was the focal lens. So right now I'm just going to zoom all the way into 55. And to do that, you essentially just twist that lens. And as I twist it, can you guys see those numbers right there? As I twist, it tells me whether I'm at 18 or 55, which is where I want to go. And as you go longer, that lens kind of zooms out. Like, you know, you get that longer focal lens. So that is the first step. The second step is the aperture. And then I'm going to go into the settings. Oh, you can see that clear as day. That's beautiful. As soon as a touch screen, thankfully. So up there where it has an F-stop is where I want to select. It wants to stay on. Okay, so I want to select that. Okay, so we're going to zoom basic Betty out to 55. And the lowest aperture that we can go to is... 5.6. So that is where we are right now. ISO is on auto. Um, if you want to change that, you can. I usually shoot on 100, but I'm going to keep it at auto right now. So now we're going to turn around right now, open this screen up. As you can see, I think you can see it's really dark in that monitor. So what I'm going to do is lower, decrease that shutter speed. And as I'm decreasing it, it was at like 2000 before, which was too high. As I decrease it, you can see what's in there now, right? So um, I'm gonna decrease this a little bit more. Something to keep in mind, your shutter speed, you never wanna go lower than your, your focal length. So if my focal length is at 55 right now, I don't wanna take it lower than that. So I will keep it just at 60. And right there is looking really good. It's just really close right now because my focal length is zoomed in. So I'm gonna push this table down a little bit so we can actually get a picture. Okay, so I have my focal length set to 55. The aperture is as low as it'll go on this basic Betty lens, 5.6. And my subject, that plant, is spaced nicely from the background. And I'm gonna show you guys this picture right now. Let's take it first. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. As you can see, there's a great deal of background blur. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens when you bring that focal length in from 55 to 18, is it? Yeah, 55 to 18 and you increase the aperture. I'm going to change my aperture, change the aperture. I'm bringing it all the way up to let's say 22. With that one, with the 18 millimeter focal length and the 22 um, f-stop, you don't get as much blur. I'm gonna show you guys that picture. It isn't nearly as much blur. It still is a little, but not a lot. You can still make all the details in the background. Now, if I were to push this plant even closer to that desk, you will see even more background. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh. Okay, 
so with that picture, not only is it crazy grainy because the ISO is so high, but you see everything. There's barely any background blur. So that was a really quick example showing you how important those three factors are in uh, blurring your background. Let me let me switch back over to my desk because my knees, I, I don't have those Megastyle knees and they're hurting. They're hurting me right now, so I'll be right back. All right, that is all she wrote. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you guys are gonna capture some amazing photos with blurred background. If you do, be sure to tag me on Instagram, Pieces of Onya. I can't wait to see. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And also let me know what you guys thought about this new video flow with like multiple scenes. I'm up, I'm down on my knees. Let me know if you guys like that and I'll definitely keep it going. Until next time, me and Basic Betty are signing off. Bye.